Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus on cardiac lecture number 36, myocarditis and pericarditis, infective tissue problems with heart failure. To pave the way, I can be found on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and nursingcamp.com. It's from my sticky note called infective cardiac tissue problems. Well, I'm breaking it apart and taking one concept at a time. All right, let's get into it. In my previous lecture, I talked about um, location of infection, where endocarditis is very specific to the inside of the heart. And usually on the inside of the heart, the endocardium is from the outside problems, usually like, um, like drug use or something like that. But what we're going to talk about now is myocarditis. Myocarditis is a smaller um, topic, but the interesting thing about myocarditis is it can be viral. Um, and the outcome is that they have CHF symptoms. Because the tissue, so think of like a MI. So the problem is, is the heart is just isn't pumping, decreased cardiac output. And they have CHF symptoms. So what are those CHF symptoms? Like S3 sounds. S4 sounds, you know, CHF, shortness of breath, uh, crackles, edema. They could also have thromboembolisms. Usually thromboembolisms are a result of bacterial myocarditis. So what do you do? You do, would do blood cultures to see if it's viral or bacterial. But if they're presented with CHF symptoms and there's a problem and there's no history other than a recent virus or um, bacterial infection and there's no cardiac history, um, it's usually myocarditis. Uh, some other things that you might look at for that is with myocarditis, you treat the underlying cause, whatever the underlying cause is. Um, and sometimes these patients you know, might actually need some uh, me strong medications to pump this heart because they get pretty um, CHF um, as far as low ejection fraction. So they're going to get an echo to see whether or not, um, see how much damage is to the heart. And they might get some inotropic medications. Inotropic means um, a forceful force of contraction. It means it, it beats the heart for it. Increases contractility. Definitely bed rest because these patients are going to be really winded and short of breath um, and they're going to be acute. Um, what else? So myocarditis is either viral or bacterial. It is acute. Um, they ultimately to resulting in some inotropic medications. More specifically like dobutamine which I call dobutamine, butamine. And dobutamine is, um, see my dobutamine lecture, which is a beta-1 agonist. And what that means is, is that it pumps the heart for cardiac output. All right, let's get into the next one, pericarditis. Whoa. Pericarditis. All right, well, the pericarditis is a pericardium, right? So it's outside the heart. So, so it's the sac that's outside. So it's this section. So when you're looking at infections, it's paid. Okay. And the infections are usually called from pericardiocentesis, cardiocentesis. That's where they stick a needle into the pericardium. And that might be because of um, patient have a previous MI or a cabbage or something like that. And they had to enter into it and they, they resulted in an infection. Or they had to evaluate why is this, what's wrong with this fluid here? And that's a pericardiosynthesis. They are draining the fluid. Uh, 
And so pericardial drains are a risk for pericarditis too. A, aneurysms, um, structure, uh, infections, bacterial or fungal um, for this because they're invasive, you know, something happened. Or it's just in the, in the plasma or the fluid, pericardial fluid, sorry. And then um, drugs, certain medications, drugs chat, CH. Um, anticoagulants, P, P, uh, like Coumadin, um, heparin, uh, procanamide, anticoagulants, procanamide, and uh, phenytoin, or Dilantin, chap. These are all medications that could cause pericarditis, pericarditis, excuse me. All right, so what does the patient look like? Um, well, this is a characteristic. You're not going to hear extra heart sounds, but you will hear the characteristic leathering, rubbing sound, or pericarditis, uh, um, a friction rub. And what happens is, is that the patient will want to sit in a tripod position, leaning forward. And because they want to uh, get, because the left side of the heart has all this infection, and so they try to get it off of that. And they feel more comfortable that way. Uh, the risk is that the fluid starts to build up in this pericardium and and um, tamponade starts to happen. So they're definitely at risk for tamponade. And tamponade is um, the triple D's. See my cardiac tamponade video for that. Uh, distended um, neck veins, distant heart sounds, and decreased blood pressure. And unequal pulses too um, with that. Pulses paradoxes with tamponade. Um, that's a risk with pericarditis is that this happens and it actually causes pressure on this heart and they don't pump out as much. Some other things that you start to hear is um, uh, dressless syndrome after pericarditis, which is uh, fear. You fear dressless syndrome. And what that is, is, is that fever, um, effusions, they start to, the fluid starts to go into the heart and they start to fuse out. So you get fluid outside the heart. So you get these pericardial effusions. And then um, acute MI, they can get an MI and they get this rub. So you fear pericarditis. Next thing is, um, what do we do for treatment? Well, we, geez, we treat the underlying cause. One, we'll drain them. So pericarditis and tesis, we're gonna to try to take some of this fluid out. Um, we're also going to um, give them antibiotics, treat the underlying cause. Um, we, they might get a drain. And that drain you're gonna monitor for um, kinks and clots because if a kink happens here the fluid can't get out so pericarditis the next thing you know cardiac tamponade so it becomes a further problem so you always monitor pericardial drains for kinks and clots and um, for anything greater than 100 cc's is always a cue out uh, steroids for inflammation so that's they're all going to be inflamed so you're going to want to give them steroids you'll monitor uh, glucose because of steroids and white count because of steroids. Um, also monitor ST changes um, for MI, okay? Or ST depressions. So pericarditis, pretty acute. Um, it's usually invasive. It's something caused it to happen. We monitor for cardiac tamponade. A lot of other specific things are like um, uh, distended neck veins, distended heart sounds. It's very specific. They sit forward, so it's a very characteristic thing. You'll listen to the heart sounds with them leaning forward like that. And you're going to be listening for that friction rub. So there's a distinct difference between you know, infective tissue problems. On the NCLEX, though, you know, when they talk about them, it's not so much why that happened. It's more about what they look like or the anticipating findings. So whenever you're taking care of a patient who's a post-cabbage or 
patient has a recent history of an infection and you start to hear new and distinct heart sounds, it's usually leaning towards something infective and um, it is acute. There's nothing we can do about that right now. We can give some medications, but we have to treat the underlying cause. Well, that's about it. My name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp and um, these are my sticky notes and cardiac lecture. Um, that's it. You can follow me on social media. Nursing.